Oh, well, look at that. She's filming another TBR video. reading warriors and welcome to today's video so initially huh, I had a whole other video filmed and ready to go except that went well it wasn't filmed and ready to go it was filmed and when I went to edit it my phone decided that three of the videos no longer work and it and it that was literally half the video so I was like huh, okay so it's been a bit stressful this week, so please forgive me if I am like a little more scatterbrained or just don't seem to have things together. It, it's been a week. I'm also at my parents' house, so I don't have my bookshelf with me. I only have some books, you know, and, um, and because my phone has decided to say no, peace out. I now have to film this video on my computer, so the quality is not going to be as good, and I apologize. <laughs> Next week's video will be better because it's one I pre-recorded, but hopefully by September, I will have figured this out and be able to film videos as normal again. I'm really hoping so. But, yep, those are all my disclaimers. Let's just hop right into today's video, which, yes, is a TBR video. So. The Magical Readathon, hosted by G, is happening this September, which is really exciting. I actually had not heard much about it before. Uh, I watched the announcement video, so if you haven't heard of it or don't know what it is or are curious about other more specific prompts, link is down below. You can go ahead and check it out there to her announcement video. Um, and in the description of the announcement video is where she has all of the really cool documents that I uh, won't have, obviously. Um, I wanted to print them off, but then, again, issues with the printer, technology hates me. <laughs> Ooh, off to a great start here. So, yeah, kind of the whole idea behind the Magical Readathon is that we are journeying to a school where we are going to learn magic, and there's a whole bunch of history behind, um, the land and like the different creatures that live, like G has went above and beyond and created a whole like world. It is phenomenal. I am super excited. And so, <laughs> so this month is going to be Aurelium the Novice Path. And so it is our pathway to get to the school so that in April we can do our studies. And yes, this readathon is going to happen multiple times in the year and I am super here for it and excited. Um, I'm thrilled. So there are seven prompts to get you through the map on the journey to complete throughout the month of September, but then there are a few other prompts to do any time before April, so it can be a September or it can be not in September, like later. Um, so I will go through all the prompts and tell you what I have figured out now. So the first one is the Novice Path Entrance. Read a book with a map. And so I'm going to go with We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. It has a gorgeous two-page map. So this is a book that I have slightly started reading. I am maybe 50 pages into it. But the thing is, is I'm also re currently reading like three other books. <laughs> so I would like to finish those ones first because I have been uh, reading them for longer. So even though I've already started this one, I'm going to have this be for the first prom, so I, I won't like pick it back up again until September, but I'm not quite that far into it. So, And September's not that far away. Yeah, kind of crazy, but I'm, I'm ready for fall. I'm ready for September. Anyway, not the point. So this will fulfill that first prompt. It is very quickly about, it follows two main characters, one who's a girl who dresses up like a male hunter in order to go out and feed her village by going into these magical woods that no one else can go into and out of and be completely okay, but for some reason she can, so go her. And then the second is the prince of the land who is an assassin and everyone is afraid of him because he's really good at being an assassin. And these two both have to go on a journey to find this magical thing in order to bring magic, 
magic back into the world to make it how it once was, which was wonderful. So, I'm, I think, so this has been in many a TBR for me, and I think the problem is that I look at it and it's a bit thicker, and it intimidates me to start a readathon with a thick book. Or, or like, end one, you know? So this is gonna be interesting, but I think just having already started it is going to help me, hopefully. We'll see. Prompt number two, we have come to the Ashtborn tree. And this prompt is to read a book that tempts you, or is at the top of your TBR. And so a book that tempts me is Curse of the Spectre Queen, and this is by Jenny Elder Moak. And this tempts me because I only very recently acquired it, like I haven't even put it in a haul video yet. Some of these books I, I haven't put in a haul video yet, but that, um, this tempts me because it de deals with Celtic mythology, and I have an obsession with Celtic and Irish mythology, um, so I'm really excited. I believe it takes place in Dublin, Ireland, and she starts off in a bookstore, and that's really all I need to know is the, is the mythology and the bookstore, and it's set in Ireland, and I am ready to go. So, I... I saw this on the shelf and I was like, oh, I'm not here to buy books, but I have to buy that one. And that, yeah, now it's here and it's tempting me very hardcore right now. The third area on our quest is the Mist of Solitude and that is to read a standalone. And I believe this is a standalone, but it is Briar Heart. And this is a feminist retelling of Sleeping Beauty featuring Aurora's older sister, who is not in line for the throne because she is of the queen's first husband. And she gets tasked to control magic as well as become a badass combat, combat person so that she can protect Aurora from danger, such as the evil fairy who cursed her into an endless sleep. So, booyah. Yeah. This is... I think fits Mr. Solitude pretty good in terms of both material, vibe, and like actually fitting the prompt itself. So I'm excited to read this one. Then the next one is the Ruins of the Sky, and this is to feature something supernatural like ghosts or a haunted house. And so for this one, I am choosing Where the Briars Sleep by Emma Baven, and I know that this book is spooky, and I know because I've started it, but I haven't finished it yet, because I wanted to save it for spooky season, and so I know it has something to do with this spooky wardrobe, and I don't, I'm not far enough to know, like, is it a ghost? Is it a haunted wardrobe? Is it a haunted house? So, but I know it's going to be one of those things, like, it'll fit the prompt. Yeah, and I was hooked from page one. I am super super ready and excited to finish it. So if I can hurry up and get through these three books so that I can just finish that one, it'd be, it'd be great. And then next we stumble upon Obsidian Falls, and this is to read a horror or a thriller or a mystery, um, yeah, a thriller or a mystery book. And so for this, I've chosen The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I am so excited. I have heard multiple people on book two read and rave about this book. And so I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm going to give that a try. And this book is following all the, you know, like the trope, or I don't even know if it's a trope, but like just when you watch a horror movie and there's that one girl that survives. Yeah. You round up a bunch of those and put them in a support group. And that's the basis for what this book is. And then all of a sudden, someone starts killing off the support group. And you're like, oh no, I, they gotta go through this again. They have to survive again. But they're not going to. I just, oof. I'm... I didn't, I was not sold on this book at first. And then I heard Olivia Reads a Latte as well as Alexandra Rosalyn read this, and they both just gave it such high marks that I was like, all right, I'm sold. I'm picking this up. So again, I bought it, and I'm very excited for it to grace my shelves. I really need to film that haul soon, but it's okay. It's okay. 
Tower of Rumination is our next stop, and this one is to read a five-star prediction. And I, I always struggle with five-star predictions because I don't like giving them out because I don't want to hype up the book too much and then end up being disappointed by it and not giving it five star. But so with this one, I'm going to go with One by One by Ruth Ware, and this is because I have events going on at the end of September that I will tell you about in a couple weeks in September, so be patient, but that's why, especially at the end of this readathon, there are going to be quite a few, like, horror thriller books, so click subscribe and hit the bell if you want to know what's going on here. I'm just gonna say one by one by Ruth Rare because I am very excited. I have heard lots of positive things about it. Um, and because I am new to the genre, I think that I will be more likely to rate books higher because it all seems new and it all seems wonderful and exciting. Um, so I think it could be a five-star prediction, but I really don't want to put the pressure of being a five-star prediction on that book. So. Our final stop is the Aurelian Arc, and this is where you can like see the school in the distance so you know you've made it. And this is to read a book with a school setting. And so for that, I think I'm gonna go with A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik um, because I've been wanting to read that book for a long time. It's obviously set in an academic setting. <sighs> yeah. I just felt like there are so many options, but at the same time, like, this is the one that first came to my mind and stood out to me, so it's the one I'm gonna go with. So, those are the seven prompts to get you through the map to the school. You complete that, you complete the readathon, and you can move on. Um, you can double up and triple up and just, however, multiple prompts for one book. I just selected one book for each prompt just in case, although there are a couple on here that I could very easily double up if I need them to. Um, so that gets you through the path, but before April you need to create your character and in order to do that there are there is a sheet of paper that G has made and you can print that off or fill out electronically or in your brain or whatever, um, but there are three things on there that require reading prompts. So not everything does, but there are three on there that do require a reading prompt. I am just going to briefly share that with you just because those will also be books that I am reading. I would love to do it in September, but I don't know if I'll be able to. What it is, is your background. So you can have two options for the background and that is uh, wild or urban and the prompts for those are pretty self-explanatory. Wild is something, is a read a book where the setting takes place like outside or in a forest versus urban is read a book that takes place in like a city or a town or a setting like that. And so I decided that I want to be wild and I want to come from a forest. And so the book I've decided to read for that is Red Wolf, which takes place in a forest, I believe, because this follows a girl who can shapeshift, and she shapeshifts into a wolf to protect her village. It is surrounded by woods, and so some of it might take place in the village, but I'm reading this for the woodsy aspect, so. And this I will probably read in October, because my September TBR has, as you have seen, seven books. It's pretty big especially since I haven't been reading that many books per month, even though I want to be. I have chosen this one to make me from the woods. And then the next one that you can do is you choose what province you're from. And this one's interesting because, so how the world works, it's a lot easier if you're looking at the map, but it's the idea that there are these four continents or four provinces, and this basically helps you choose which one you want to be from, and so there are four to choose from, and they all have their own prompts. There's read a book set in a desert, read a dark academia, uh, one that features fae or elven characters, and then read a book from an ongoing series. Those are the prompts for the four different continents, and I think I'm choosing my continent mostly based off of the prompt a little bit as well, as well as a little bit of what I want my character background to be. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with Dark Meadow, read an, read a Dark Academia book, um, because 
I love Dark Academia, and I'm a-okay with my character being from uh, Dark Meadow, but also because in October, I, or at the end of September, I hope to read other Dark Academia books along with A Deadly Education, but worst comes to worst, I can just double prompt Deadly Education. Uh, so I have somewhere to be from. And then the last one on your character that uh, has a prompt is your heritage, so what creature you are. And my struggling here is that I am still deciding between two creatures. I So I'm struggling between an elf um, because I love how they incorporate magic into what they create. I think I love how they draw their magic from the moon and the stars at night. Like those are just things that are my favorite. They speak to me. And so the prompt for that is to uh, read a book with like moon or stars either on the title or in the cover. Um, and I'm sure I, I can't think of very many right now, but I am so sure that I have books on my TBR and on my bookshelf that would cover this prompt. Um, but the thing is, is that I always choose an elf whenever I do anything like this, like D&D related, cosplay, like so many, whatever I do that involves like these magical creatures, I'm always wanting to choose the elf. And so I'm sitting here and I'm like, do something different, Laura, do something different different this time. So the other one that I'm interested in reading or interested in possibly being is an earthling and these deal with elemental magic. And so you can be four different types, you know, obviously air, fire, earth, water. So there too, I would have to pick what kind of elemental I would want to be or earthling I would want to be. According to the Avatar The Last Airbender quiz, I would be an earthbender. So then that makes me think, oh, I should be an earth, earthling, a uh, ground one. But like, being fire would just be so cool. Water would be helpful. Yeah, it just, it involves decisions, which is okay because I have until April to make this decision. But also just because I'm filming this video now, I'm like, I want to know now. Um, but yeah, so the prompt for this creature is to read a book with elemental magic or an element word in the book or the series title. So that's the air, water, earth, fire. And again, I know that there are probably books on my shelf that I would be able to complete this prompt with. I know there's a book at the library that I was interested in reading that would complete this prompt. Can't remember what it was called, but it's all about elemental magic. Yeah, as you can tell, I don't quite have answers to all these prompts yet, but it's because I have until April, and I don't want to rush things because I want to really take time with my character because you have the option of doing, like, this year creating a character and then next year creating a new character or continuing on with the character that you have already created. And obviously, you know, if we're going to school, so there's four years of education, you can choose to get your character to whatever level of education all four for your masters or two or three or whatever and or you can choose to create a new character every year or every other year you know you can do whatever you want so i think i would like to stick with this character all four years and like really power them up to like their master level so i want to create something good and that i'm proud of but we'll see. Yep, so that was my new TBR readathon, magical readathon video. Um, I I really hope I can complete this one, guys. I, I've been trying so hard, and I finally started reading again recently, but the, all the books I'm reading are pretty big and chunky, so I'm like, oh, if I can get these books done but for the readathon, then I can spend all my time reading the books in the readathon, and I'm crossing my fingers that that works, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for sticking with me through this terrible audio quality and video quality. Again, I'm really sorry about that. If you, if you want to subscribe, please feel free to do so. Normally my videos are much better quality. I upload every Thursday and i have lots of bookish featured social media down below that you can go ahead and follow me on as well and i think that's just about everything so until i see you all in the next video i wish you a happy reading